I went to this little hole in the wall place for lunch and I'm is like this Chinese place and I got some soup and I remember there was hardly anyone in there except for a homeless man was outside asking me for money and so I felt bad for him I mean he couldn't come in and eat with everyone I thought he was just going to take the money and leave he really wanted the soup he wasn't buying alcohol which I thought he was going to so he came in with me and sat down with me and we had a bowl of soup and the owners were trying to shoo him away like no 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 you can't be in here and I was like no no he's good we're talking it's okay and I sat there and had a conversation it was so sweet because he felt like he didn't belong and they made him feel like he didn't belong and it was just my heart went out for him and as a child didn't have a lot of what you'd call christianity in my home or anything there were plaques up that said the lord's prayer and things like that but we only went to church for a few years. I was so-called saved, baptized, and then by the age of 10, that was it was all gone. We moved and we just didn't go to church. So I grew up believing there was God the Father, but I didn't know who Jesus was. I really didn't understand the gospel at all, I'll be honest with you. I had no relationship with Jesus. I sang about him in songs as a child, but I didn't know him. So while, why we are here in my laundry room is this is exactly where I met Jesus for the first time. I can honestly say I was born again. I got clean and sober in here as well <laughs> while doing the laundry. It's, God has a sense of humor. Anyway, so I had problems with alcohol growing up. I started drinking in the eighth grade for fun with my friends. I soon discovered that I was somehow funnier or cooler drinking. I wasn't, but I thought I was, and it plagued my life. Um, my life basically reflected a lack of relationship with God. The drinking, the partying, the relationships with un unhealthy relationships, and just this deep sadness, this deep longing for a connection. And I thought I could get it with the right job and moving and the right apartment and money and the right car. And I got all of those things and I still felt wiped out. I still had no idea who I was, my value as a human being, nothing. I was always empty and I filled it up with lusts of the flesh and all of that I thought was going quite well although it wasn't I mean it was a horrendous life it looked fine to other people I guess I had a job and a nice place to live and I had children and I remember going to San Francisco on a business trip with my husband and while he was in his meeting, I walked around the city and I didn't know where I was going. I literally just was walking up and down the streets and I ended up meeting, I went to this little hole in the wall place for lunch and I'm, is like this Chinese place and I got some soup. And I remember there was hardly anyone in there except for a homeless man was outside asking me for money. And so I felt bad for him. I mean, he couldn't come in and eat with everyone. I thought he was just going to take the money and leave. He really wanted the soup. He wasn't buying alcohol, which I thought he was going to. So he came in with me and sat down with me and we had a bowl of soup and the owners were trying to shoo him away. Like, no, 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 you can't be in here. And I was like, no, no, he's good. We're talking. It's okay. And I sat there and had a conversation <laughs> It was so sweet because he felt like he didn't belong and they made him feel like he didn't belong. And it was just, my heart went out for him. And, um, sorry, 
And so we got up and we started walking and just talking. And I said, you know, I, I want to help you. And at the time, I didn't know the Lord, but it was the first time I felt the Holy Spirit really soften my heart to Him. I felt a connection to God, and I was helping Him because of God. It was just strange. Anyway, so we walked to a little supermarket, and I gave, I went inside with Him, and I said, I'm going to get you some stuff. And... We got a little shopping basket, and I put in bananas, and I put in a razor and shaving cream, and just went around the store. And I don't know how much I spent. I mean, it was probably like 15 bucks or something. And he looked at me, and he said, you know, you're mothering me. You're taking care of me. And, I, and it was like an extension of love to him, like as a mother. I mean, I'm younger. I was younger than him. But he felt that mothering, kind of that love. And it was just such a cool connection. And then I went to the ATM and I gave him another 20 bucks. And I said, friend, you know, I just, I hope that you find help. And I hope so much for you, you know. And he kept walking me along the streets. And we ended up going underneath a, um, it was like a ton, like a tunnel. I could always see the other side, but I mean, there's quite a walk in the darkness and I kept thinking, oh my, you know, normally I wouldn't do things like this because I would be more worried about my safety and things like that. But I just kept walking with him and felt a connection. And we got to the other side where, you know, you pop out the other side of the tunnel and he goes, well, this is where I leave you. This is, you know, this is your world. I'm walking, you know, like I'm bringing you back to your world. And it was such a defining moment for me. Um, I think that's when God started working on my heart. And it's true, though, you know, it's like money, social status, being homeless, super rich, all kind of divides us into these worlds that we have either access to or we don't. And I felt somehow that God was bridging all of that between us. And so I don't know how much time passed, but you know, I continued to drink quite heavily. Um, I was a stay at home mom. I was miserable. I was hiding my drinking. I would open wine in the morning, guzzle it, when people weren't looking, hide it in my drawers, hide it in my closet, in my boots, in my purses. And I just never wanted the feeling of reality to overtake me. I wanted to stay numb. And I don't know, I didn't know at the time that I wanted that because of my separation from God, that I was not saved and everything felt like it was killing me, honestly. Like not knowing him. Um, so there I numbed it, and it was horrible. And I lived like that for years. And fast forward to another trip to San Francisco, of all places, um, for my reunion. And I'm sorry, not my high school reunion, to meet up with a friend from high school. And she took us on a tour. Or, I mean, we, we spent days just indulging in food and expensive wine and just like I mean I got sick of it by the end of it I was like okay enough you know with this indulgence you know and we ended up going to Grace Cathedral and I don't know if you've ever been to Grace Cathedral but it's so beautiful and you walk in and there's these lights streaming down from the you know the top of the ceiling and it's just like this whole wow you know you like you I got smacked in the face with the presence of God there's also um, a labyrinth which is like a, a maze on the floor and you know you walk it's it's I think they call it unicursal or something like there's like one way in and one way out and you just like walk along the floor on this maze and so I started to do that and I immediately felt God tell me, 
I didn't hear it audibly, but I, it almost was audible. Sit down, come talk to me. And all my friends are walking along the maze and I halt and I'm like, oh, okay. And I go sit in a pew, the back row by myself and I sit down and I just, I start weeping. And I tell God, I'm so, I'm so sorry, I've been so far away. Like, I have, I have such pain and I don't know what I'm doing. And I still didn't know Jesus, so I didn't know to cry out for Jesus. Honestly, I'm talking to God the Father, avoiding Jesus altogether. I, d I didn't get it. And I just sat there and wept, but I knew I had to figure out how to get to God. And so I spent the next two years watching Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. Do you remember those? She had every new age teacher on there saying, oh yeah, we're all, you know, we all worship the same God. We just hop in different vehicles and we get to the same God different ways and it's all, you know, it's all good. And I spent two years watching that. Eckhart Tolle and Wayne Dyer and all of them. And I felt nothing. I felt nothing. I felt like they all had a system and a book that they were promoting. And I tried to do what they told me to do. And I felt the same way. I was still drinking. I felt miserable. I didn't feel any closer to God. And I'm like, all right. So um, they're saying that Jesus is not the only way that they have this other way and it's not working. And so I decided I'm going to find out who Jesus is. I want to know, did he really exist? Was he really on this planet? Is there proof of that? I wanted to know, and it was kind of like a case for Christ. And I took a, I mean, I read and I took things apart and I watched testimonies. Te people's testimonies are so powerful. That's why I feel like this is important to tell you that I wasn't going to let it go because it's the one question we have to deal with in our life. Who is Jesus to you? Was he the son of God? Was he telling the truth or was he crazy and a liar? And you have to decide that for yourself because eternity is a long, long, long time to spend in hell separated from God with no do-overs. You have to take this so seriously and you have to find out for yourself. And I relentlessly pursued him. And it finally got down. I mean, after looking at the Shroud of Turin and the Bible and praying and watching other people's testimonies it finally came down to a moment, literally, in my washroom. Here, I'm standing right here, and I'm folding the clothes. And I remember, overcome with just, just grief, that feeling of separation just gripped me again. And I cried out, and I, I went running. <laughs> I'll show you. I went running through here. It's my dog, Tater Tot. Went running through my house and I threw myself down on the floor. And I cried out to God and Jesus and I said, save me, save me. Please God, save me for myself, from my sins. I want you to save me. I can't do it by myself. I need you. I need you, Lord. You saved all these other people and they said that you come into their life and you save them and you make them new and I need you to do that for me. I need you. And I got up. I was on the floor a long time. I confessed every sin that I could remember. And I said, I, am, I turned from my sin. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for what I've done. And I came in here, I came back in here and I started folding my clothes again. I 
had a wave of energy went through my head, down through my body, through my right leg, and I stood there just shaking. And I remember shaking and shaking and shaking. And I didn't know what was happening to me. And I didn't know at that moment he was healing me of alcoholism, of all the pain. It took away all the shame that I had. I felt this weight lift from my body. I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. I had a burning in my chest for three days. Three days, I felt like it was streaming like this connection to God in my chest. And this is not how everyone will experience salvation. But he healed me of alcoholism. It was a pretty extreme feeling. And don't think that just because when you got saved, it didn't happen like this, or you didn't feel electricity or whatever, it's different. It's different for everybody. Um, I can't tell you how you're gonna feel, but everyone that I've seen can tell something has happened. A weight's been lifted, an acknowledgement of feeling and thinking about God and wanting new desires and the presence of the Holy Spirit will start changing you. But none of, I mean, don't use this as a concrete example is what I'm saying. This was for me. But I knew at that moment, it was all different. And I forgot to mention when I was 20, I prayed a prayer of salvation. And the next day I went out probably drinking or doing whatever I was doing. Words don't save you. It's a metanoia. It's a change of heart. It's a literal seeing your sin, repenting, seeing your sin as separating from you and God, and you know it, and you know there's nothing that's going to save you but Jesus. He is the only one that can save you. And when you see him as holy and precious and you see your sin as separating you from God, that's the, that's the repentance. Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you at that nanosecond, nanosecond, you are saved and sealed for eternity and no one can take that away from you not even you the holy spirit doesn't come into you and then leave when you go smoke a pack of cigarettes or you know go out sinning does not it's sanctification the sanctification period is after you're saved walking out your life with the holy spirit and he will give you new desires of your heart. He will change your mind, your way of thinking. You are a new creation in Christ at that nanosecond that you believe.